Hi friends. So today what we are going to do is we are going to uh, make um, hot air balloons. Okay. So for this hot air balloons, these are the supplies that we need. Uh, we need a paper. I'm using the other half of the paper that we used last week. We need um, watercolors. We need crayons. And we need a pencil. For watercolors, we need some water. And you need something to draw a circle with. The circle should be uh, just big enough uh, to it should not be too big it should be there should be enough space on either sides when you put it okay so and it should be like half the size of the paper okay. so and I also have the color wheel that I made last week because we'll be looking uh, at the color wheel to find the best colors that will go well together okay so first let's draw the hot air balloon for that i'm going to um start with a circle okay i'm going to leave some space on top and some space on the side and then i'm going to make a circle so the hot air balloon is not really like um a circle it is it's like more of like a balloon shaped okay so i'm going to add two lines like this to the side and then connect it so this part of the circle i'm going to erase it off okay so i have hands out of different ways you can draw the uh, hot air balloon can you guys see this if I put it here let me move the things away or what I'll do is I will put it here you can see the end that thing no maybe I'll put a picture of this in between the video so you can um, take a look at it to get ideas to make the pattern okay uh, i'm going to put this to the side now and then i'm going to continue drawing with my hot air balloon so the hot air balloon after you are done with this portion we are going to make the uh, basket okay so the basket is around here so it's almost the same length as this one draw a line the same length as this and then i'm going to make another line a rectangle turn that into a rectangle and i'm going to make another rectangle attached to it okay so let's um attach the basket to the balloon so this uh, this is like the other side of the basket so that's why this line is only till here okay now let's give the basket texture make it look like it is a weaved basket so you can either make lines like this or you can have crisscross lines let me do this way So what I'm doing is I'm alternating the lines, okay? You 
Now this, I'm going to divide this into sections, uh, like segments. So first, let's draw the line in the middle. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn this around and then I'm going to make a rainbow starting from this end to this. Turn this around, make another one here. So, uh, if you want, oh, this won't help. I thought that you can make the segments that way. I'm going to make another one. Turn it around on this side. So now it looks like it has, it's like made of segments, right? Um, this I'm going to lightly curve here also. I don't want a sharp change. All right. So now let's make the sections. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the black permanent marker. You guys don't have a black permanent marker. You are going to use a uh the crayon the black crayon okay uh don't use the marker that comes in the marker set because it's not permanent and we are going to use watercolors on top it's going to bleed okay so next what i'm going to do is i'm going to um, make some pattern looking at this or maybe I'll think of a pattern myself. Same thing you can do, okay? You can think of a pattern yourself and then make something. Okay. It looks something like this one, but I'm going to change it a little bit. I don't want it to be exactly like that. I'm getting the ideas from that, but I'm not going to exactly copy that. Maybe I'll mix and match. Okay, what should it look? Maybe I'll make, so let me first outline all these things in black I'm using this marker instead of the crayons so that I can do this super fast, okay? Because crayons, it takes a little bit more time to draw lines with the crayon. I want to finish this so that you guys can see how it looks. So I'm done. Um, maybe I should make some stars or some other pattern, right? Or I'll just make a uh, polka dot slick. Something on the bottom, maybe. Okay, the rest I'm going to leave it like that. basket you can as I told you guys can just have seen this one the lines are going just 
downwards like that some of these look like they are weaved right so it's up to you how you make it um i just want the i like the way it looks when it is like weaved so that's why i'm like using that okay Has anyone of you gone, taken a ride in the hot air balloon? I want to, but I don't have the courage to get on a hot air balloon because I am scared of heights. So I don't know how would be how it would be if I get on a hot air balloon and once it rises up, I'm even scared when the aeroplanes take off. So um aeroplanes at least if you once it takes off you just feel like it's somewhere up but it, you don't realize that you are that up in the air right but the hot air balloon because you can see what is happening um around you um, if you take a look you will know that you are flying so in a plane if you don't look down you will not realize that you are up so i don't know i will be not be able to survive the hot air balloon ride so let's now uh, add some lines for us uh, to show clouds or winds okay so clouds how do you usually draw a cloud i'm going to turn this paper and clouds can like that right doesn't have any shape it's like poofy so uh, you guys won't be able to see what I'm how I'm drawing. That's why I showed you guys that. So I'm just going to make some clouds, some lines. So because it is in white, you guys won't be able to see it, but once, so I'll just show you some um, of the clouds that I did. So what I did was some was peeping behind, like it's like from behind the balloon like that. Some was like this on up and some was like again, half is hidden behind. So I just made a few clouds like this okay so with the crayon white crayon press it down really well so that um it shows up really well when you paint okay so after this um let me put this here no let me put this away now what we're going to do is we are going to use um colors now to color right so let's see so i'm going to tell you guys what how the colors can be uh used so you can decide um how you're going to what type of colors you're going to put together whether you are going to use complementary colors to get the effect that you want um or you're going to use uh, com uh, analogous colors so let's talk about all these colors okay so complementary colors are colors that are opposite uh, to each other on the color wheel we have learned that in second grade third grade and all these classes right hope you guys remember that so what is the complementary color of red the complementary color of red what is opposite to it see green what is the complementary color of purple yellow orange what is opposite to it blue so what complementary colors do is when you use these colors together um, they make it uh, the colors will stand out more okay it they will uh, complement each other so the red will help the green to show well the green will make the red show well on a, on your uh, on the picture so 
or whatever colors you use so complementary colors if you use together they will complement each other so that's why they are called complementary colors they are just the colors opposite to each other in the color wheel there are another set of colors that looks good together they are called uh, analogous colors what these colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel so blue uh, purple and red can be analogous colors purple red and orange they are colors so what is the so if i ask you what is the analogous color of blue then what are the colors next to it blue uh, blue the colors next to it is green and purple so the analogous colors of blue is uh, green and purple and if you use these three colors together they are going to look nice they will uh, have a nice uh, they will blend well together and you will get a nice uh, a picture that has a nice harmony if you use so again the complementary color of red would be purple and orange complementary color of yellow is orange and green so colors on the right and left to a color they are the complementary colors okay so color right and left of uh, orange is yellow and red so now you know the complementary colors you know uh, the analogous colors did i say complementary for the colors next to each other no analogous i guess so the colors next to each other on the color wheel are called analogous colors okay and the colors um let me write down analogous somewhere so that you know what analogous is and analogous. so analogous colors are colors next to each other on the color wheel and the colors opposite they like complement each other they are called the complementary colors okay next to each other opposite now there is another set of colors called triadic colors they're called triadic colors so these colors are colors that are like uh, form a triangle tri or um, or we can say these are the colors that are equal distance on the color wheel when you use these three colors together what happens is you will have a nice visual contrast while retaining the balance there will be a colorful richness okay it's best to let one color dominate and use the others that are just like accenting so um try the color of red would be not this so it's like you skip a color and then this is it and skip so blue blue these three are the triadic color of together these three are another set of triadic colors okay got so purple green and orange will look good together and um, red blue and yellow will look to get good together in this uh, one color should uh, of this one color would be really nice and bright and the other colors will be just uh, like not dominating but just uh, supporting this color okay so when you are coloring choose one of the uh, color sets like uh, if you are using the complementary colors just use the complementary colors to color your color wheel okay so in the sections in these the color wheel should be just uh, colored using um suppose i'm using purple and yellow the entire thing should be colored with purple and yellow you can use um you guys have a bigger set of crayons right 24 set so what you can do is you can use if there is multiple colors of yellow and multiple purples you can use all those 
let me grab my crayon balls. So, this set has three different purples, right? So, you can get those three purples out. Three purples. Yeah. So, this is a purple. This is, it's not the same purple, right? This is violet purple and this is blue violet. And I need one more to go with that. Something that has purple in it. Indigo. Blue, beaut, beautiful. <laughs> I like the names. This has red violet. So these three, you can use these three. And you can use, how many yellows do we have? Only one yellow. So you can color the entire thing. If you're using uh, purple and blue, just uh, not purple and blue, purple and yellow, you can use these three colors to color the entire balloon if you're using just the complementary colors if you're using blue and um orange we have a lot more see you can use all these blues this is what is the color cellular ser cerulon i don't know how to say that indigo blue beautiful blue so all these four and then you have these oranges oh so many orange so you can use all these um yellow orange scarlet red orange and orange to color the entire thing let me show you if you're using red and green you have these all these to use you can even use this red in that got it blue is there is more blue mm. so here the purple and yellow this many red you can use this and that so if you're using just complementary colors these are how we are going to use this is this thing if you're using analogous colors, analogous colors are colors next to each other, right? So, again, you can use all the, this orange and red. So, there is more colors for you, use, for you to use. If you're using orange, you have orange, red, and yellow. These three. If you're using purple, blue, and green, you have all these to use together okay so that is if you're using the analogous colors what you what if you see you're using triadic colors triadic are uh, like uh, you're skipping a color right so if you're using red you'll take red then you will use yellow and then you'll use blue so these three colors together okay if you're using purple, green, and purple, green, and orange. So any of this orange, you can choose maybe a bright orange and you will use these three. So pick a color and I should do the combination. Don't mix the other colors with that. Okay and decide what type of uh, colors you're using and then you're going to color that way, okay? I'm going to use triadic colors, so I don't need these. I'm going to use my old set. It has all the colors that I need in there so, so that I can leave these things nice and sharp when I need them for some other project. So let me put this away. 
so did you guys decide the colors if you are still in doubt if you want to rewind the uh, thing and decide the colors that you want to use go ahead and do that okay i'm going to take orange purple and green okay these are the colors that i'm using and then of course for the basket i'm going to use brown okay so let's start painting or coloring painting later this is now coloring so i'm going to use so i'm going to put I have no idea what colors I'm going to put where, but all I know is I'm only using these three colors. If I want, I can even use maybe a lighter version of these colors, but if um, you don't even have to use another crayon, you just, if you want to make this lighter, just press lighter when you're coloring. That's all. So today we learned a lot of color combinations, right? Hope you guys remember those combinations. Hmm. So maybe next week onwards, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a question after each um, lesson, uh, a question from what we learned that day. Okay. So, and um, when you're sending the, me the email with the picture of the project that we did that day, uh, you can email me the answer to the question. And then I'm going to see like each month, maybe we or end of the year, we'll have like a honor roll where if you get all the questions right, you would be honored at the end of the year. Maybe the, we'll have when we have an art show or something, we will put in a in the art show saying this person was an honor student who answered got all the questions right something like that i haven't decided what to do with it but i'm just still wondering but from next week onwards or should we start from this week what do you think okay maybe we'll maybe next week because i didn't tell you guys about it uh this week so uh, you guys were not ready, right? So I use the third color. I'm going to use my this this color now for the rest of the thing. Now you may be wondering, where are we going to paint? We are going to paint the sky. Okay. Did you guys have fun making the rainbow, um, like a, a dolphin inside the rainbow, the color wheel, the rainbow color wheel? Did you? I had a lot of fun making that lesson with you guys. I hope you guys, uh, I know most of you would be knowing how to draw a dolphin being a Nimitz student because our mascot is a dolphin, right? But if you didn't know, I hope you guys learned how to make a dolphin, draw a dolphin before you are done with your fifth uh, grade in Nimitz.
So all these colors that we are using right now are the secondary colors. Did you notice that? Hmm? The trident, triadic colors of uh, this um, purple, orange and green, they are the secondary colors. The other set is the primary colors. So, I think somebody gave all these new names for these things. So, I'm done with the coloring the rain, um, not the rainbow, the balloon. Now, I'm going to color the basket. I'm going to color it brown, okay? So, you guys can decide what color you're going to do. I have decided to color my um, basket brown. Okie dokie. Now, I'm done coloring with the crayon. I'm going to put my crayons away. And then take my... Hmm watercolors so hope you guys have some water next to you and now let's um, learn the right way to use watercolors the right way you'll be wondering is there a right way and the wrong way to use watercolors of course there is a right way to take care of your watercolors I'm not there to check how you guys are taking care of your watercolors but I think you guys can take care of your colors well so that it will uh, work well for all your lessons, okay? So the first thing that you need to do is take care of your brush. So the brush, of course, the most important part of the brush is the bristle part, okay? So the bristle part, the hair part should stay intact always. It should not turn, the hair should not turn frizzy or it should not lose its shape. What will happen if that happens is you will not be able to paint well if your, the brush loses the, like the hair is um, all messy. So see that? You don't play with it. Sometimes I see kids um, take the bristle part and then test it how soft it is. Uh, like play on their hand, like paint on their hand, press it down uh, on the paper, like stabbing motion. Don't do all those things because um, that will mess up the uh, the brush part of the, the bristle part of the uh, brush. And another thing that will happen is this is a very thin brush and it has very little hair. What will happen if your brush loses all the hair? Doing all those things uh, will make the hair, the, the, the brush is going to lose all the hair and then you won't have any hair, uh, the brush won't any, have any hair for you to paint with. So take good care of it. The next thing that you need to keep in mind when you're painting, you guys all know, I know you guys are, are all experts in painting with the brush because we do a lot of painting in school right but i just want to recap because we haven't painted in some time so when you're painting don't put your fingers on the metal part of the brush because if your hand uh, the fingers are on the metal part you will get paint on your fingers and also you won't have nice good control Okay, so your finger should be always just about the metal part and you should be holding your brush just like you hold your a pencil. Okay, don't hold this way like you're stabbing something though some of you, um, not some, all my kids, all my students are awesome. You don't do these things like stabbing with the, uh, stabbing the paper with the brush like that. So you guys know how to hold your brush. Hold it like this, not like this. This is how you hold another kind of brush. This is how you hold your toothbrush when you're brushing, right? But this brush you need to hold like a pencil. Okay. So now, um, the next two colors that we are going to use is pur purple and blue. Okay, right now the colors are dry. So we need to wake up these colors. 
okay so the best way to wake someone up if you are sleepy is put a slap spa splash of water right wash your face with a splash of uh, wash your face or something so just like that we are going to add some water to this uh colors we are going to put maybe dip the brush in water maybe one two three four and blue one two three four this much water will is enough what i'm going to do next is i'm going to this uh, color is not activated till so we need to activate the colors it's just like water is separate the colors are separate they are not mixed so we are going to mix them so what we are going to do is you are going to swirl your brush lightly in the paint okay see that you don't um, swirl too fast because the paint would get into the other colors so you are going to swirl lightly okay now you have enough paint on your brush so now we are going to start painting. I'm going to start from the top. So what is appearing when we are painting? The clouds that we made. If your brush is dry, I'm going to take a sip of water or just put my brush in water and then come back and continue painting. Don't paint on the same part again and again because that is going to make the paper super wet and soggy and it's going to tear your paper. Okay. So I'm going to take some more blue. I'm going to put it here. I left some space over there. I will go back later and then I will finish that up. Okay. There is another cloud here. Hmm. So what is happening is because we used crayon, crayon is made with um, wax, right? Wax is like a type of oil. Water and oil doesn't mix well. So the crayon is pushing away the water. That's how why you can see the clouds that we made with the white crayon. Okay. So each time your brush is dry, you dip it in the water and then go back. Take some more paint 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 dry this fellow is dry again so i'm just taking a sip of water so now i'm going to change the color so you don't actually need to wash your brush right now because purple is um a color that you make by mixing blue and red so if it is there is a little bit of blue it is fine but we have activated the color so we need to swirl your brush in purple again uh, lightly swirl lightly you are not going in you know like super fast we don't want to get the colors out okay and then i'm going to put the paint like that let me dip some water because brush is super dry you're not going over the uh, balloon So what I'm going to do next is I'm just taking water and then going over the place like that. Maybe a little bit of color, a little bit of, I'm just want to blend this blue and purple well. Okay, I'm not scrubbing my brush on the paper. That is not the right way. Little bit of paint and then little bit more water. Should not have a harsh line of separation between the colors. That way it won't look nice. So more water 
and then I'm going just with the water to the blue. Water, a dip of color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of water and then dip in blue and then go over this lightly. If your paper is ripping right now, that means you have used a lot of water. So then what you can do is to layer this, you can wait till it dry a bit and then come back. Okay, guys, don't paint on the wet thing. If it is super wet and dripping, stop. Take a break. I think it looks nicely blended, right? Okay. So this is the finished look. Okay, so we, this is how it will look. So let me show you how to wash your brush before you put it off. So I'm going to like pretend that you are sweeping the floor of a floor, okay? So there is a dirt, you need to remove the dirt. Here, the dirt is not on the floor, but on the brush. So what you're doing is you're going to press your brush on the floor. See how I'm pressing? I'm not doing this. I'm just pressing it like this in one direction and then press it the other way. A few times. I'm taking my time. I'm watching how I'm doing this. Okay. And then I'm swirling in the water lightly and then I'm wiping. Now, the brush is super clean. Uh, it may look like it is not clean, but it is clean. See, there is no paint. Okay. And then see how the brush look. It looks the same like when it looked when we started. Okay. I'm going to put it here and uh, I'll wait for the paint to dry because otherwise there is these two colors have still water in it we didn't use up all the paint right so there is let this water dry before you close this otherwise it's going to get moldy in case there is paint if you got paint outside take a paper towel and lightly wipe it once the paint is dry okay and one and then for close it and then once it dry close it and put it back in the envelope so another thing that we forgot today is to write our name on the bottom. So wait for this to dry. I'm, mine is almost dry here. So I'm going to write my name. Put your room number. No, to put your grade and your room number. I'm just putting some random number. And then uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take a picture of this and email me in the email address that um, I will put at the end of the video like last time okay um you need to wait for this to dry before uh, you put this away also okay when it you when the watercolor dry it will become a little bit more lighter so let's wait and see how it turns out i hope you guys enjoyed this uh, lesson and you guys learned something new today like triadic colors analogous colors and complementary colors um, till we meet next week. Bye-bye.